Hello, this video is about the changes I've noticed since updating my Samsung Vibrant to Android 2.2. I'm sure I may have missed some stuff, but hopefully nothing too important. Feel free to mention anything I missed in the comments. I'm going to start with what I consider to be some minor changes. Then I'm going to talk about some of the flaws introduced with this update. And finally, I'm going to end with stuff that I really like about this update. So without further delay, here we go. First things first, this update is faster. At least in my experience anyway. There have been some people who said that this update made their phone slower, but not here though. Websites load quicker, switching between home screens feels smoother, games play better. It could just be me, but the phone even feels like it boots up faster. This update adds a quick way to turn off mobile data. All you need to do is hold down the power button, and there it is, data network mode. Tap on that to toggle mobile data. I should point out that this is for mobile data only. Wi-Fi is not affected and will continue to connect even after you toggle this off. This is a great way to help conserve your battery's charge if you don't mind not getting your Gmail, Google Voice text messages, or anything else that periodically reaches out to the internet. You can now toggle the auto rotation sensing of the phone right from the notification bar. The only time I've ever found this useful is when you're looking at a picture that somebody took holding the camera or the phone the wrong way. Other than that, I don't know when you would use this. If you have any uses for this, please put them in the comments. Google Search is now in the Apps list, so if you're currently using the search widget and you want to free up a couple spaces on your home screen, here's your answer. Me personally, I prefer taking up no spaces and using the search button on the phone itself. To each their own though. There's now a calendar widget. This is something I was missing when I switched from the G1 to the Vibrant. It's a very basic widget. It just shows the current date and the date, time, and location of the next event. And that's it. For some people, that's enough. If it is for you, here you go. Now I'm going to move on to some of the flaws introduced with this update. If you saw my Vibrant 2.2 upgrade video, then you know that this update reset my home screen to default. I think I said it a little bit differently, though. Aw, oh, it redid my home screen! Why would you do that? It's pretty annoying, so you may want to take note of where those icons and widgets are on your home screen before updating. In my case, it turned out my home screen could use a good redo anyway. There's no such thing as silent mode anymore. At least, not a truly silent mode. They still call it silent mode, however now it's just a vibrate mode. I'm not saying that vibrate mode is bad, but I would like to have the option to make my phone completely shut up if I wanted to. Sometimes a phone shaking in my pocket can be just as distracting as a loud ringtone. In the middle of making this video, I realized you could fix the silent mode in settings. To do this, click on Settings, Sound, and then Vibrate. From there, you select Only When Not In Silent Mode. The Avatar movie that comes with the phone no longer works after the update, at least on my phone. I don't know if it's true for all phones post-update, though. Clicking on the icon doesn't do a thing. It doesn't even try and open an app or anything. The files still exist on the SD card, so hopefully Samsung can find some way to fix this. I haven't seen the movie yet, and I'm not really too sure I would have wanted my first viewing to be on such a small screen anyway, Super AMOLED or not. If anything, this gives you a reason to either clear the SD card or install a new one. One of the prettiest live wallpapers that I've ever seen is now gone with this update. I'm talking about Ocean Waves. I could just tap on this wallpaper all day long. Now, if you're paying attention, you may be wondering how I have footage of this wallpaper if it's gone. I'd like to say I shot video of it just in case something like this happened. But the real answer is actually much cooler. Somebody has taken this wallpaper and put it on the Android market. So get over there and download it back. The camera app now encodes location data in the photos it takes. Some people would consider this an improvement. The reason I regard it as a flaw is because there's no way to disable it. Try as you might, you cannot disable this. I've tried clicking the little satellite icon on the top left. All that does is focus on the area. I've tried checking every option in the settings menu and there's still no way to disable it. And the menu button doesn't do anything. You may be asking yourself, why is this a concern? Well, let's say you take a picture at your house and you upload it to Facebook, Twitter, or even email it to somebody. Potentially, somebody could take that information embedded in that picture and get GPS coordinates directly to your house. This can be a privacy concern, seeing as you probably don't want every person that sees that picture to know exactly where you live. 
There are some times, however, where this feature would be pretty cool. Let's say you go on a trip and you take some pictures. Now you could use the location data in the pictures to see exactly where you were when you took them. It kind of adds to the remembering. So I'm by no means saying that this feature is totally bad. I just wish they would add the ability to toggle it. Till then, I'll be uploading fewer pictures from my phone. If you happen to know of a good replacement camera app, please mention it in the comments. Preferably free. Okay, that's enough of the bad stuff. Back to the good stuff. Here's the stuff I really love about this update. It's now a lot easier to select and pick your location in editable text. This is something that's been needed for quite a while. It was really a pain to select text before. Now all you do is tap on the text box and you get this little selector thing. Just put it on the text you want to select, then you'll get some options. Click the T icon and drag the selector in the direction you want. Release the selector and a new menu will pop up. Then you'll get options like copy, cut, and paste. If you want the selector to go away, just tap on it. You can now pinch on the home screen to get a view of all your home screens. With seven of them, it really makes selecting the one that you want much easier. This feature is something that until now I've been jealous of whenever I use my brother's Evo 4G. One thing the Evo still has that the Vibrant does not is the ability to hit the home button while already on the home screen to enable this. This update brings T-Mobile's Wi-Fi calling app. If you're in an area with poor T-Mobile signal and you happen to have a Wi-Fi connection, then this is a great way to be able to make phone calls. Your call will go through your Wi-Fi connection and not T-Mobile cell towers. To turn it on, you just tap on the little switch on the bottom. It takes a little bit of time to connect. Obviously, make sure you're connected to your Wi-Fi network. Once you're connected, you just make a call like you normally would. Like the notification says, these calls still use planned minutes. So don't think this is a way to make free phone calls. It isn't. With Android 2.2, there are now better Gmail and YouTube apps available in the Android market. I would highly recommend downloading these. The new Gmail app has a better interface overall. If you have multiple Gmail accounts, you could pick which one you're using from the main mail screen. The Compose screen looks better too. What I really like are the changes to view in a mail. You have this little expandable bar that lets you reply, reply to all, and forward a mail quickly without getting in the way. My favorite addition is these buttons on the bottom of the screen, specifically the two arrow buttons to let you skip to the next or previous message. The YouTube app that's available on the market is also greatly improved. If you're logged in, the first thing you'll see are videos from your subscriptions. I like this because even when I go to YouTube site, all I care about are videos from my subscriptions. Viewing a video has also seen some awesome improvements, not only when holding the phone sideways, but even more so when holding it upright. Holding the phone sideways gives you a full screen view like usual. One great improvement, however, is the addition of a better selector that is easier to get a hold of than before. So now you could select your position in a video with much greater precision. Holding the phone upright while playing a video is much more interesting though. You get a smaller version of the video, but you also get many of the options you may be accustomed to on the YouTube website. You could thumbs up and down a video, save it the favorites or playlists, share the video using one of the apps installed on your phone, or even just copy the URL of the video. The bottom half of the screen lets you swipe to see the video's description, related videos, and comments. Lastly, I end with something I totally did not expect with this update. I haven't had the chance to try it out yet, but I'm looking forward to my opportunity. It is the mobile access point in tethering. This lets you share your phone's internet connection with a Wi-Fi enabled computer or any other Wi-Fi enabled device for that matter, like an iPad or PSP. This is something that normally cell carriers charge extra monthly for. Because of this, I really don't know if T-Mobile meant to let this in or if it slipped in under the radar. To enable the mobile access point, you go to Settings, click on Wireless and Network, then tap on Mobile AP. You'll want to configure the access point before enabling it. Tap on Mobile AP Settings, give it a name in the Network SSID field. After that, tap on the Security drop-down menu and tap on WPA2. Give it a password and tap on Save. All that's left is to tap on the checkbox to enable it. Like the warning box says, this will eat through your battery and use a lot more data. I would recommend an unlimited data plan and using it only while the phone is charging. That's the mobile access point. The other means of sharing your phone's net connection is by USB tethering. 
I don't really know too much about this one because the help section says it only works in Windows Vista or Windows 7. I currently use Ubuntu Linux primarily, so I'll leave it to you to figure that one out. Overall, this update is great. It really made me love the Vibrant more than I already did. I just wish that Samsung and T-Mobile would have released it earlier. It was way overdue. Here's hoping that 2.3 and any other versions of Android come to the Vibrant in a shorter amount of time. That's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, you may want to consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I'll be making videos about Android among other topics. Whether you subscribe or not, thanks for watching.